Hello, everyone. Welcome to APM Conference 2021. We're glad that you guys can join us today. And in this session, we'll be talking about testing mobile apps with Flutter and APM, the trade-offs with Iran Kinsbrunner and Shivatsa Sri Rangaraju. And without further delay, I would hand it over to you guys. Thank you, Arisha. And hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Aran Kinswuner. I am a chief evangelist and a senior director at Perfecto, which is a Perforce company. I'm honored to be joined by uh, Shri. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, Shri. How are you? I'm absolutely fine. So good morning to you, Iran. And uh, good evening, uh, depending on the time zone, to all the participants, the respective good things. Uh, excited to be a part of this uh, wonderful conference. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us to you know, explore and uh, talk about the happening stuff, uh, which is Flutter, which we hear a lot nowadays. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, a slight teaser, uh, we are going to leave you behind after this session, uh, knowing two and a half methods of testing Flutter applications, uh, and you will get later on uh, the half uh, method. We are definitely going to cover two methods, but there is also uh, a half-baked uh, method to testing applica Flutter application. We're going to talk about it uh, pretty soon. Uh, as mentioned, uh, I'm a sen Senior Director, Chief uh, DevOps Evangelist at Perfecto, which is a Perforce company, also an author of uh, these uh, few books, uh, joined by a, a lot of uh, industry leaders from the community. Uh, Shri, if you want to introduce yourself for just a, a moment. I'm a Senior Solution Engineer. I work for uh, Perfecto slash Perforce uh, for, and covering the APAC region. So I handle multiple uh, pre-sales uh, activities. And I've been, you know, working as a trainer in the past experience and uh, lucky to be a part of uh, the ongoing journey with Perfecto. Awesome. Uh, so without any delays, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to uh, give, for those of you online who aren't uh, familiar with Flutter, uh, just a brief introduction to what is uh, Flutter, what is the Flutter framework, <clears throat> what are a few of the benefits of Flutter? And there are multiple benefits, not just from a testing and development perspective, but also from other uh, aspects. And we're going to dive deeper into uh, testing Flutter uh, applications, but also what are the trade-offs, what are the differences when you test the Flutter application using the native Flutter framework and using the Appium driver, which is also available currently open source. So we're going to touch on of that, uh, all of that. We are going, as part of uh, the preparation for this session, we kind of uncovered a few limitations of uh, Flutter, uh, where Appium has some advantages. Uh, it's not, it, it's kind of a fair fight, so we're going to give credits to both uh, methods uh, during this session. Uh, as mentioned earlier by uh, our lovely moderator, uh, feel free to ask us any questions that you might have during this uh, session through the Q&A panel. We'll be happy to address them. So what is Flutter? Flutter is an open source software development uh, technology uh, led and developed by Google. Google is uh, developing many technologies. And uh, as you can see, whatever, whatever Google touches becomes uh, kind of gold. And you see just uh, based on last month's trend, uh, Flutter is catching up with the adoption of React Native, which has been in the market for way long. Uh, and one of the things behind Google's um, initiative to build Flutter uh, is obviously to provide a single unified code base that you can develop uh, most of your uh, digital as well as desktop applications on. Uh, they are also building Fuxia, which is their open source uh, uh, framework or um, operating system. After they built Chromebook, they are now building Fuxia. Flutter runs and is going to run also on this Google uh, Fuxia operating system. By the way, Fuxia can also run Android applications, so that's kind of the, the connection. Uh, and for those of you online who are familiar with all the technologies from Microsoft, like Xamarin, so this is exactly uh, from a, a goal or objective perspective, this is exactly like Xamari, meaning a single code base that compiles into multiple binaries that can run on web and mobile as well as desktop applications. Uh, Google Flutter is built with Dart. Dart is the development language for the application themselves, but also for the testing framework that is built into the Flutter technology. 
So again, Flutter, open source, led by Google, built with Dart, single code base that compiles and builds multiple applications. The way Flutter is built, uh, it has a very rich and very uh, unique architecture. And I think a few of the benefits of Flutter is in its framework, in, in the uh, deep framework layer. And this is where the UI UX is kind of uh, being uh, served, served to the developers. The material and the Cupertino design uh, allows developers to, to uh, utilize unique widgets and a rendering engine that can really compile uh, through the C and C++ uh, engine uh, that you see in the middle, the application. And this is where they go through the embedder and that's the platform specific uh, builder or compiler that really packs and creates the application across the different supported uh, environment uh, plat uh, platforms. And you can see here that the embedder has a native plugins and application packaging, and also a rendering surface setup. Uh, obviously, everything that is uh, in this deck and uh, much more is available in the Flutter.dev website. So if you want to learn even more about the, the Flutter framework itself, the architecture and the different components, feel free to go to the Flutter.dev. Some of the benefits for Flutter, and before I'm talking about the, the, the benefits to the business, the benefits to us practitioners, developers, and testers. So obviously, when you have a single code base, you have a faster development, right? You write with that uh, the, the core layer of the application, and you compile it and build uh, the APKs for Android, the IPS for iOS, and other uh, binaries for the Fuchsia OS and the desktop. Uh, and slash web applications. So uh, this is one benefit of being able to go to market much faster. I talked earlier about the material and the Cupertino design. These are the enablers of the expressive and flexible UI. And uh, I will soon give you some examples of Flutter ready applications. You can see here one example that actually won some awards that's Reflectly, but it's not the only one. And this is uh, an award winning application and some of the uh, cases for this application to win awards is obviously the UI, UX, the performance uh, across the different platforms. Last but not least is the native performance. Obviously, when we are uh, marching towards a much more advanced uh, world with progressive web applications surrounding us and foldable smartphones and the new iPhones that were just released, uh, everyone is looking for better and richer user experience. Uh, you will see that Flutter has a very uh, good performance running on the smartphones, the tablets, but also you will also learn that from an execution performance, uh, test execution performance, it also runs pretty fast. We'll touch on that uh, later in this session. Yeah, just Before to add over here, yeah, just to yeah. add uh, over here. So many of uh, the client whom we are interacting with are also following this path. So they're really catching up to the trend. They realize slowly like how a single framework can help them. So not only from a development perspective, even while writing the tests as well. So it is like one test which can run on iOS as well as Android. So we'll see that, uh, you know, um, going through in the, in, the, in the next set of slides. De definitely, this is a good point. Uh, when we work uh, uh, within Perfecto, and we work with many enterprises across different verticals, uh, just over the past few weeks, uh, I spoke with a uh, client uh, from the healthcare uh, domain and also a banking uh, vendor. And uh, both of them are now shifting from native iOS and Android applications towards Flutter. And some of their uh, business objectives are just what we are showing to you right now in the screen. It's much more cost effective to build and test a Flutter application using a single code. You just need a, one skill set which knows Dart, Dart is quite close to uh, Java. So uh, it's really easy to learn and uh, get, get up to speed with this language. And obviously, again, this uh, entire set of benefits are driving adoption from the, the biggest enterprises. Um, we talked earlier about productivity of Flutter to developers and the UI UX. This is just a, a sample that uh, called Magic 
provided. Uh, and you can see here, not just the, uh, the fast performance, but also one of the benefits that Flutter comes built within the framework is what we call hot reload, meaning you change an icon, you change any command within the source code of the Flutter application. This is Dart, what you see on the left, main.dart, that's the main class. It immediately reloads and changes on the, on the device under test. Um, we'll talk a bit about, uh, you know, how we would uh, do it with Perfecto through what we have dev tunnel. So <clears throat> think about a device that is connected via USB to your uh, desktop, even if it's in the cloud, uh, whatever developer is changing on his source code will be automatically reflected once this hot reload uh, runs. And basically you can debug uh, any line of code immediately after you change it on the real device. And this is something that you cannot do with Appium uh, or other, uh, sorry, not with Appium, with uh, Android native and iOS uh, native uh, coding, coding technologies. So this is one of the productivity benefits of Flutter to developers. I mentioned earlier uh, Reflectly, but it's not just that, and it's not just the UI UX. You can see here that BMW just recently uh, featured themselves in the showcase Flutter website, and this is through their new My BMW application. And this is uh, using a single code base to build the iOS, Android, and you know that BMW is also uh, an automotive uh, it's an automotive vendor, but they have the connectivity to, to the Apple car and the Android uh, auto, which means that any Flutter application that is being built by BMW also will communicate with their set of box or whatever they have kit in the cars that they are uh, selling. So uh, it's obviously a huge productivity business uh, value to these guys. This is the NU Bank, Mexico and other, uh, you know, uh, South America. Um, uh, region, regional bank, uh, also transition to Flutter, Square, the payment solution, Google Assistant, and other. So you can learn more if you click on this link after this session. You can actually see uh, some more use cases and uh, case studies of why these guys move to Flutter. But with that, let's uh, dive deeper into the Flutter testing. We, it's now much clearer why Flutter is uh, being adopted so fast and what are some of the benefits? Flutter is being, uh, you know, uh, we talked about uh, Google behind that. Flutter is being built quite fast and Google is releasing almost uh, every two months. You know, uh, just last uh, May, four months ago, uh, we were in release 2.13. Since then we had release 2.14. And just uh, this month, uh, 2.5 of Flutter uh, technology was released by Google. And you can see that uh, this is not a minor release. In each of these releases, Google is taking their technology uh, much further uh, from a productivity perspective, uh, development, as well as testing capabilities that are being offered to the end users. Uh, so obviously, major performance improvements, everyone is doing that. But support for Android full screen edge to edge mode. So uh, you can actually build an application and utilize the entire uh, Android full screen capabilities. Uh, you can see here this GIF uh, example. So that's the scroll under support within the material design also uh, introduced in the recent Flutter release. Uh, just a few months ago, uh, type aliases, you can create a new name for any existing type and it can be used anywhere in the original uh, application. Uh, you can see that some other uh, changes were made. For example, that is now available as a Docker official image. And also uh, static code analysis was also introduced with uh, uh, Dart pub add uh, lints. So you can actually uh, create, this is a dev friendly capability, but you know, as part of the, the hot reload that we talked about, you can also run a CLI and do a static code analysis for the Dart code uh, and also accessibility support that was also uh, added to the uh, framework. So if you are looking to the latest version of Flutter, Flutter is now landing on version 2.5 as of this month. And this also implies, uh, you know, that many organizations are looking into it very seriously and Google knows it. And that's why they are investing a lot of time and effort. And alone in 2.5 version, I think more than 4,000 issues were fixed and a lot of new features were also introduced. 
right? Which is uh, again, which will be making this product more lucrative, and then many organization uh, will definitely you know take this uh, into their uh, uh, product roadmap in in very near future, as we are seeing. De definitely, Shri, and we we have seen with the uh, Zamarin by Microsoft, the framework itself was very mature, but uh, the technology, the other technologies such as testing and uh, you know dev tools, if you like, uh, were not as well maintained, uh, which led to Zamarin not being uh, you know utilized to its extent. It was very good, but it wasn't perfect. Google, I think, is learning from previous mistakes and uh, is building capabilities not just for developer, for developers, for testers, accessibility uh, is an uh, item, code quality, this is the static code analysis. So uh, I think this is a huge investment that Google is making to make this technology a winning one uh, for many reasons. Uh, let's now shift towards testing Flutter applications and you have three ways of testing such uh, applications. Shri, do you want to take through this uh, slide? Sure. So since it is uh, the, the, the main intention of the conference is around APM and which is more around the testing. So now we will slowly transit you know, into the testing phase and then the coming up slides will talk about how we uh, as a QA uh, will do testing and how APM will be uh, shaped further and the current solutions, whatever we have in the market, which currently support the existing uh, tests of Flutter. So three kinds of tests. So Unit testing, I'm sure many of us have heard this word unit test with any language or software development, we do the unit test. And basically this is a role of the developers, right? And now with Flutter, we have two keywords additionally. One is the widget testing. Again, this also lies in the hands of the developer or as we have researched so far and discussed with many of our existing clients. So the responsibility of unit and widget are in the developer. But in this session, we focus more towards the integration testing where people like us, the QA, uh, will be responsible for uh, writing this test and ensuring that they run on uh, all the given devices. Right Now, in order to run the Flutter test or if the developer wants to run these kinds of testing, right? Uh, so either you can do it with local uh, emulator simulator or with, um, Vendors like Perfecto, you have features through which you can execute these on the remote devices, the unit and the widget testing. But however, integration testing offers uh, another layer over here. So either you can run it on your locally connected devices, or you can run them or package them and run them on uh, the any cloud devices, right? So that is what we will see in the next coming slides. So next slide, uh, please. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn more about the integration test, how do we build, et cetera, again, written in Dart languages, very similar to the known programming languages, like since QA, we know as we evolved from uh, VB and then uh, we joined to the Java, then C++, JavaScript, et cetera. So this is just another language. So it's an easy transit for us. So we can just uh, learn the common syntax and then start writing this test. And remember these tests are common for iOS as well as Android, the same test, which works for iOS will work for Android, but the way in which we build the application will be slightly different, right? And Flutter also offers commands to build APK or uh, uh, iOS IP, IP applications as well, right? Now this syntax, what you see is it is just running a sample integration test on a particular device, which is connected locally, right? Um, this is one such method, but again, over here, this is more during the design time like creation of my test, how, how does it run, et cetera. But definitely when it comes to the execution um, uh, or CI, CD uh, or a daily build execution, so this may not be scalable that much, right? And some of the steps which are written over here, just took it from the, uh, the documentation of, of the Flutter. So it's basically the same way, uh, if you are aware with native frameworks like Espresso and XUI, the same way you have app to test, you, you instrument it, uh, you add the dependencies and you create the test but unlike the other framework. So here you have one common script, right? Now, what else we have over here or what Flutter offers compared to other frameworks? Well, um, a list of tools over here and uh, the IDEs with support. So I personally found uh, the IntelliJ uh, to be much more uh, 
uh, working compared to visual code or the command prompt uh, based uh, creation and execution and the reason so it has already inbuilt uh, packages which you can readily install on the ide and then it will provide you options to create uh, flutter projects on the fly right and for creation hot reload the feature which uh, iran explained everything is available with uh, um, with, with the ide right so here uh, as an example we have taken a screenshot for one of the sample application which uh, um, is uh, provided by the flutter themselves right so the application you see running on, running on a remote device on perfecto and this, it appears to be connected locally as well via some features and you can see the properties of the object now i think one question is asked already on the chat which one to prefer flutter or apm to write the test right now what we did we did a research over here and um, the flutter in general doesn't follow the standard approach of uh, uh, you know the, the properties which we know right content description label value text etc cetera, etc cetera, which come with ios and android resource ids etc right so here it's a bit different so here there are there are something called stool tape uh, or text etc which are common right and these properties are not uh, provided or not uh, available by the apm in the apm inspector so I, 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 at hardly you can what you can get will be a content description uh, for the android and probably the label or the value for the um, ios uh, objects which means that not all the properties are exposed which makes automation via the standard apm or the standard apm very hard for us okay um, now how do i get to the properties like we have apm inspector so here we have a flutter inspector which you are seeing over here the, the middle one uh, in the dark so here it is showing you the a uh, tree structure of the application which is rendered on the perfect pro device right so using this so we will um, get the object properties and follow the standard approaches so you can use uh, uh, the page object pattern or you can use the normal approach of creating the objects with the corresponding properties on the fly and then execute them right now here um yeah so I, I think so more details on flutter inspector will be is available uh, in that uh, uh, next section now apart from that uh, if you are working with flutter there is also something like flutter doctor which is of importance so it will tell you whether you have installed the right dependencies in, in terms of android studio xcode uh, the coco parts etc etc which are needed for uh, creating the application and also running the application and running the tests right um, and yes. What, what, what's important to, to note as well, Shri, is that uh, whatever we see right now, this is the moment in time, right? This is September 2021. Uh, right. Google is moving quite fast. So if we talk uh, next year in the next Appium conference, uh, I'm sure that we'll be in a different position and not just from, you know, the inspector and the exposed uh, elements uh, from the application into the object spy, but much more. So this is currently the moment in time. But, yeah. uh, you know, I think, uh, Shri, this is bringing us to... Yeah. You know, so, APM then, is also not behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, here, APM is also not behind. Uh, exactly. And uh, what, what we are seeing, you know, I gave a teaser in the beginning that we are looking right now at uh, two and a half methods of testing Flutter applications. One of them is the native Flutter framework, which we will soon touch on. The other one is the Appium Flutter driver, which is an open source initiative that utilizes WebDriver.io, and the half solution is what's currently in Appium 2.0 beta, and it's hopefully coming later this year uh, with Appium 2.0 GA, but Appium is obviously splitting each driver into its unique technology. As you can see here uh, in the Appium 2.0, you will have an, a driver list and you can install a specific driver, one of which is Flutter. So with Appium 2.0, uh, Flutter should be a baked driver into the technology, making Appium with Flutter much more connected, more robust, more advanced than what we are currently using with the open source initiatives uh, outside of the Appium, uh, I would say, uh, committee. So this is also coming later this year. Let's move to the uh, meet. Uh, of this uh, comparison, because as Shri mentioned, uh, we did some analysis and research on Flutter uh, driver and 
Appium Flutter driver and looked at what you can accomplish from a test automation perspective uh, with each solution. Uh, we are going to look at this uh, comparison table and then move to a short demo that uh, Shri recorded, showing you how you work with the native Flutter uh, Dart technology in the cloud and also give a, snip a snippet of how you would do it with the Appium for Flutter. As you can see on the left, these are the things that you can do with Appium native framework, Appium testing framework uh, with the Flutter plugin, as well as Appium with Perfecto. On the right hand, this is what you can do with the Flutter Dart, the Flutter native testing technology. And as you can see, there are few things that are A, by design, B, are just maturity uh, limitations of Flutter that Appium can close. Uh, looking at biometrics, it's, very, it's, it's a very critical capability. With Appium, you can do biometric testing, uh, uh, you know, like face and fingerprint. You cannot do it as of today uh, with the native Flutter Dart uh, framework. I'm talking about test automation, obviously not the application development. We, we can do also uh, testing of network virtualization profiles with Appium and Perfecto. Uh, and uh, actually Appium and maybe other vendors as well, but uh, you can do network virtualization. It's not supported uh, built into the Appium, uh, sorry, into the Dart uh, framework. Accessibility, you can do accessibility scanning of your uh, Dart application with uh, Appium and Perfecto. You cannot do accessibility testing as of now in an automated fashion with the Flutter framework. The, this is, in my mind, a key uh, element, and this is, in my mind, also one of the reasons why Flutter teams are coming to uh, Perfecto and are looking at Appium Flutter driver, because uh, Flutter is limited into the context of the Dart application itself, so meaning you can only test what's inside the app, and we already see that there are some limitations, even uh, not expanding to testing, you know, system level controls like the settings and incoming uh, calls and uh, text messages. Even these uh, Android pop-ups uh, are things that are limited from a testing perspective. I think, Shri, you, you found this while you were doing this uh, analysis uh, as part of your Android testing, right? So when we discussed, yeah, that's right. So when we discussed with uh, many of the clients, so whom we know, so it's not like these enterprises are building the apps today, right? So they have their existing apps, which on uh, the native iOS and Android, but due to a lot of constraints, so they cannot maintain different teams, maintain versions, etc. So they are moving towards this unified approach of Flutter. And, and then when we discuss, do you know all of this? So, you know, from end to end integration testing perspective, yes, there are some blockers and uh, they know about it. So currently we have to, um, you know, see how the organizations can bypass this for now for the testing purpose at least. But just keep in mind if you are a QA and you, if your client or if your organization is move, deciding to moving towards Flutter. So please check all of these, uh, you know, capabilities which are required for a successful end to end uh, testing, right? And, and then what are the limitations of uh, Flutter as of now? But I'm sure in near future, so something will be picked up. And if APM offers something, so as Iran mentioned, probably by the next Selenium conference, so some of them will be, um, you know, not applicable or here. Yes, we hope so. But as of today, uh, as mentioned, uh, the you know the system level control is, is a limitation from a flutter right. testing perspective. Uh, additional uh, test automation coverage capabilities like two-factor authentication, testing audio, visual analysis, image and uh, 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 location injection. These are things that you cannot do with the Flutter testing framework. You can do it with Appium or Appium with Perfecto. Uh, you are also limited by the development languages. Obviously, Appium, Selenium have multiple language bindings. Uh, Flutter is limited to Dart only. So if you are not a, a strong Java developer and you don't know about Dart, this is a ramp up thing that you need to cover. Uh, there is an advantage to Flutter with regards to the test automation uh, execution performance and the speed. And this is attributed to what uh, Shri was mentioning earlier. The way the testing happens, it has, the tests are running on the device itself, like you do with Espresso and XCY tests, where you compile the test APK and the test IPA with the application under test itself. You upload them uh, onto the device, and the execution runs on the device. 
in opposed to the uh, web driver protocol that is uh, used by uh, Appium, which makes the testing sometimes a bit slower than Dart. So in that case, Dart uh, Flutter is uh, faster to uh, complete the execution. But uh, all in all, these are a uh, few of the main challenges, changes, uh, differences between if you would use the Appium Flutter uh, framework and the native Flutter framework to test your uh, native application. Let's look at uh, a, a real demo. Uh, and Shri, if you want to walk us through what Shri created here, he created a, a demo of uh, execution of Flutter application in the Perfecto Cloud. Feel free to take it from here, Shri. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So assuming that uh, you know uh, we know about, about the native frameworks, Espresso and uh, um, XUI, so the way in which they work uh, is that you are building test application, which contains the actual test. So here as well, what we do, um, in, in Perfecto, we have a, a great plugin, which basically supports Espresso or any kind of Flutter as well test, right? So we create a test uh, APK and the test application using the Flutter and the corresponding Android commands. Right. And then we execute them uh, all over the cloud. So what you see is the application is built and is being uploaded, which will run or uh, which will be installed on two devices. And then it will be and the test will also be executed on the devices. When it comes to iOS as well, uh, you can create the application, right? Uh, and then you can um, also create the, the test application. IPA and the test IPA, which contains the actual code and then the actual application and the actual uh, test, right? And then the, uh, the, the same, the Gradle plugin will upload these uh, or, and install it onto the devices and then execute the uh, corresponding uh, test, right? I think the video is paused. Uh, right? Yeah, so, so the initial step is, uh, the, to of course create this test and compile the application, create the APK, and then point the corresponding integration test towards the test APK, right? And, and then use the plugin. And with an externally controlled uh, JSON, uh, we, we provide the data like which devices it has to install and what is the path of uh, these uh, applications, right? So as you see, the, the initial step is done, files are uploaded, the devices are launched, since I have provided both the device, so it can be more than two as well, but in this case, I've just taken two, right? And then the applications will be installed on, on the devices, right, as you see, uh, and the tests will be executed. So there are two tests which were taken uh, as a part of uh, this integration test. And these two tests will be executed on uh, both of the devices. And then we will have reports for uh, individual execution, which means that, we should be able to see four reports at the end of the execution, right? And uh, when we uh, look at these uh, tests, uh, you know, um, they are sample tests, but I also have worked with some of the clients who have already, uh, the QA itself, they have already started uh, on the DALT approach and they're already building these uh, DALT tests in their, uh, as a part of their uh, test automation approach, right? And here, just going back to the video. So once this is done, so we can see all the execution. So there are multiple views on Perfecto where you can uh, see a holistic view or the detailed view. Uh, so we'll just go into the current execution, which has happened. And we can see, as I said, there are two tests, crawling test and the favorite operation test, which has ran on two different devices, uh, Galaxy S8 and the uh, Galaxy Note, right? And the, the, the execution video will also be available. Uh, so some of the screenshots um, will be taken in the course uh, of the execution. So this is the approach which, um, you know, Flutter is saying that you can also do it uh, to scale, right? Basically for scaling purpose. But as I mentioned earlier, if you want to run it standalone during the uh, design time, right? Uh, so you can just use the locally connected uh, um, a locally connected device or via some of the widgets with perfect to have, you can um, uh, avail a real device and then you can build your tests, right? Use the Flutter inspector, inspect the application. And by the way, this is white box, meaning you need the source code to write the test. 
because you need to the, the inspector works in the when you are executing the application and uh, so there is a live uh, uh, you know execution of the app running on the device then you can open flutter inspector and, and then get the object properties so unlike apm where you need the apk or ipa so this is purely kind of uh, white box so you need the application source as well and IntelliJ does a good job. It supports both iOS as well as Android devices. Very, very cool, uh, Shri. And I think what we have seen here, obviously, we've we seen uh, a doubt demo of Flutter native uh, testing running on Samsung S8 and the Galaxy Note 9 in the cloud with the report and everything, the test APK and the APK itself, that this is the application under test were uploaded via the Grader plugin to our cloud. Uh, and executed in parallel. Uh, again, the testing was in the context of the app itself with all the limitations uh, that we mentioned earlier. But there is another uh, way to do testing of Flutter application, and this is through the, the WebDriver IO uh, based um, um, uh, Git repository. And this is where you can get it. Uh, do you want to say just a word about uh, Flutter uh, for Appium with the, the use of uh, WebDriver IO, Shri? Yeah, so initially, you know, when this was launched, um, the APM Flutter, so this intends to uh, resolve some of the gaps. Like say here, if you see the code base, which is put on the right side, uh, so we can switch the uh, context to native or to the Flutter, right? So which means that um, like say um, native pop-ups, right? Or any device level control, which APM offers can be tested using this particular approach. It started with WDIO, uh, but now you have this project which runs in Java, Python, etc., where you can take an application and then install it on the device wherever the native controls you need. So you can use the APM commands and wherever there is the Flutter part, you can switch the driver to Flutter and then start using the Flutter commands. Of course, there is a mapping done. So if you visit this link, you can see there is a mapping done between the native uh, uh, Flutter commands uh, to the available APM Flutter commands kind of, right? Not all of them are already ported. It is like work in progress, which is happening. And they have also a to-do list where they have um, a few of the items which are still unchecked on their side, uh, but it is going on. But I'm sure if the APM itself, as Iran mentioned, it is still in the beta, if it comes out with some out of the box uh, uh, support for uh, the Flutter, so then, yeah, we, we will be in a much better position with, with writing the Flutter test or automating Flutter applications in general. That, that definitely true. And I think that, you know, uh, as we are reaching almost the end of this session, uh, what's important to understand, uh, you have two methods right now. You have the Appium Flutter driver based on WebDriver.io that allows you to switch the context and test the native Flutter application um, uh, with, uh, this is kind of a JavaScript uh, uh, kind of language. Uh, and uh, test both or enjoy both the system level control as well as the application level testing with Appium, or you can uh, enjoy the baked or the built-in Flutter Dart technology, but test only within the context of the application and uh, kind of deal with only the uh, framework abilities that you currently have, like this limitation uh, access to the objects, uh, the, the Dart only language, the uh, test automation coverage that is currently limited. So uh, what I would recommend at the end of the day, and this is kind of when people are asking, asking me in other sessions, uh, Selenium versus Cypress, right? Uh, even though it's not exactly the same, uh, I think that uh, within a single testing and development team, you can actually enjoy the b benefits of both uh, Appium Flutter and the Flutter framework itself take the benefits of both technologies into a single test automation suite. And for example, make sure that you are enjoying the Dart capabilities, testing the native UI uh, application, the uh, application context itself, expand more test automation coverage with uh, either Appium GA, 2.0 GA, or uh, meanwhile, while the Appium is still in beta, uh, use the Appium uh, for Flutter, uh, sorry, uh, Appium Flutter driver that you currently see uh, on the screen. It's well maintained. The Git repository is open source. Of course, uh, it's, it's available and you can start using it and it gives you some capabilities that you don't have with the Flutter. So at the end of the day, and I don't know if that was one of the questions that were asked earlier, 
uh, I recommend to actually use both methods uh, to test and enjoy a maximum test automation coverage. With that, uh, we are exactly five minutes uh, till the end of this session, and I want to leave time if there are any questions uh, to myself or Shri, this is exactly the time to ask them. So uh, I will end it over to you. And by the way, if you didn't ask any questions or you, you want to take it offline, this is how you can connect with me and Shri uh, after this session. We'll also be in the Hangouts uh, within this system after the session, but this is how you can reach us uh, uh, offline if you like. So let's see if there are any questions left. So just to add, if we look at that current approach, what people follow with Espresso and the XUI, this, these frameworks have the same limitations, like you cannot do end-to-end -end testing, system level control, pop-ups, et cetera. But they try to maintain a balance between the APM test and the Espresso test, right? Espresso, wherever you can do, you could do Espresso, and then the remaining part with APM, right? And of course, these native frameworks um, are faster during the execution because they run on the device, meaning <laughs> on the device itself. So there is no server kind of concept, server plan. Cool. So uh, Alicia, do we have any questions that weren't addressed? Anything that uh, we need to compliment that the audience is? Um, I think both of the questions have been answered. We don't have any pending answer uh, questions at the moment. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.